appears ordinary until you see the core side of it. And what you're looking for is a story behind the news. We bring it to you from Lagos, the commercial capital of Nigeria. Giving you all sides and political stories round the clock. Every detail from the start line to the final whistle. Core TV News, expanding your view. This is Core TV News on the Hour with Nifemi Oguntoye. The Minister of Finance, Ngozi okonjo Wella has assured Nigerians that the economy is growing positively in spite of the reduction of oil price in the international market. okonjo Wella hosted these on Tuesday at the 2014 Ministerial Platform in Abuja, said the nation was not broke, as been speculated in the media. According to her, government is doing everything within its power to ensure economic stability in the country. She said presently, government had been budgeting below the existing oil price to help build buffers in case of uncertainty. The minister said that presently Nigeria was faced with fluctuations in quantity and price of oil, adding that it had affected the amount paid into government coffers. She urged Nigerians to bear with the nature of the economy, adding that it was the reason every effort was challenged to ensure the economy was diversified. The Senate has approved independent candidacy as well as endorsed autonomy for local government councils and the State House of Assembly. The lawmakers also adopted constitutional provisions stripping the president of the part was sent to alteration to the Constitution. All these are contained in a conference committee report which was presented by the Chairman Senate Committee on Constitution Review, E.K. Ikwaramadu, and approved by the Senate. The provisions also separated the office of the Attorney General of the Federation and Attorney General of a State from that of Minister of Justice and Commissioner of Justice. And just after the Senate had adopted the report, its Chairman on Rules and Business, Ita Enang, kicked against the process but was ruled out of order by Senate President David Mark. The Nigerian authorities insist that soldiers who engaged in insurgents in Damboa last weekend did not break the ceasefire agreement with Boko Haram. They also convinced that ongoing talks on the release of over 200 abducted Chibo girls would soon yield fruitful dividend. Coordinator of the National Information Center, Michael Murray, told Kotev News exclusively that talks are at the advanced stage. He also maintained the government negotiators are speaking with the real leadership of the insurgents. As far as we are concerned, uh, soldiers are not violating anything. Uh, just get it clear that there is no responsible professional army that will sit down and look when bandits terrorize and decimate its population and territory, no matter the condition of ceasefire because the army and government of Nigeria is defined, designed to protect and secure the people of Nigeria. So the fact that we had isolated cases of um, attacks does not generalize the breakdown of the ceasefire. We are trading cautiously. The government is investigating the claims. The armed forces have done what they had to do, but our people are still discussing with the group as promised. And we believe that the conversation that is going on, the dialogue that is going on, will end up uh, the right way. Uh, the principal private secretary to the president had, uh, been part, or has been part of the initial discussion and so therefore you expect that he will be there to conclude what had been started. What they have said, they are wary of war. We want peace. So whoever is in the group that we are talking with wants peace. And let me even put this straight. If there, as is being speculated, you have one million sec members or different groups, okay, and we're able to get one who has. In a similar development, the United States has confirmed that there are ongoing talks to free over 200 schoolgirls kidnapped by Boko Haram from Chibok Bonu State more than six months ago. 
It also affirmed that there's a ceasefire between Nigeria and the insurgents. A uh, deputy spokesman of the U.S. Department of State, Mary Half, said in Washington that negotiations are on, but would not say where the meeting is holding. The U.S. official expressed hope that both parties would respect the truce, even though fresh clashes have cast doubt on the validity of the deal. The 10th annual by annual Broadcasters Conference, Africa's 2014, has opened in Abuja with the theme Digital Broadcast Content Production, Sourcing and Delivery. It's a gathering of broadcast professionals in Nigeria and beyond, but for others, it's a marketplace for the latest technology in the industry. But with the 2015 deadline for digital broadcast only a few months away, uh, there are concerns on the preparedness of Nigeria's broadcast outfit. As the 2015 deadline for the digitalization of all broadcast media draws close, there are diverse feelings on whether Nigeria's broadcast stations can beat the deadline. The regulator admits that there are challenges, but insists they are surmountable. Well, I mean, it's, uh, digitization is a challenge for everyone. Um, it's a challenge for the broadcasters as well. Um, but I think that this conference, situating the importance of content um, within this discussion is extremely important for all of us. Um, I will say, though, that um, there's still a, a lot that's yet to be done um, in terms of content side. Part of it is also our doing. We need to get the proper regulatory framework out so that, you know, the different license tiers, uh, people know where to be, where to play in and so on. So that, that is, uh, we just recently got approval from the Honorable Minister for that. So hopefully in the next... Uh the national coordinator of the Buhari campaign organization, Audu Ogbe, has apologized to the leadership of the Brinkbaka Girls Group for describing them as members of the All Progressives Congress. He noted in a letter of apology made available to journalists that his comments were not intended to paint the protest movement as a subgroup of the APC. The former national chairman of the People's Democratic Party added that less than 2% of the membership of the group are highly valued APC members. Ogbe had during the recent public declaration of Mohamed Buhari for the presidency said APC members were at the forefront of the Bring Back a Girls campaign, a statement which the presidency said proved that the group had always been partisan in its approach. Three former ministers who recently left the federal cabinet have picked the nomination form of the People's Democratic Party to enable them to contest the governorship primaries in their states. They are former Minister of State for Niger Delta, Darius Ishaku, former Minister of Health, Onyebuchu Juku, and former Education Minister, Onyesun Wike. Ishaku, who is aspiring to be the governor of Taraba State, turned up at the party secretariat to personally pick his firm after paying the mandatory 11 million naira, while Wike was represented by former deputy speaker of the House of Representatives, Austin Opara. I'm interested in the governorship of Taraba State because I feel I have the wherewithal to bring back the state to where it used to be, harmony, peace, and progress. I will call myself that I'm actually on the rescue mission. If you know Taraba State, if you have heard of Taraba State, for the past almost two years, I don't think there has been peace in Taraba State. And I don't think ever, uh, you will want that to continue. We don't want. We are tired of the killings and the unrest. And I want to bring back peace. I want to bring back prosperity and harmony within the state. Polarization on religious and ethnicity, I will do away with them. We we'll have the state fully represented here as we speak. And, and I tell you sincerely, the stakeholders contributed money to purchase this form for the Honorable Minister. That is to show you the extent that members are, uh, the, the reverse people are involved in a new river state. What we want is a new river state, a river state that everybody has a stake. We want a river state that we will collectively develop and move the state forward. So we decided that we would contribute money and get this form. We've bought the forms and we are, as, now as we live here, we are going to present the forms to the Honorable Minister. 
these are the forms that we have purchased for the governorship race River State 2015. Let me make it clear to you all that we are not shutting the doors against other aspirants, but it is clear when you see the extent of involvement of um, the major stakeholders in River State, you know where the direction is because we have decided that this is where we are going to. The belief in some quarters that Nigerian Christians are politically shy may not be true if the deeds and words of a Lagos-based group, the Christian conscience, is anything to go by. The group wants all Christians in the country, particularly in Lagos, to play a major role in the politics of the 2015 general elections. Luashe Yadegoke encounters the group in the Mushin area of Lagos as it seeks to stamp its presence in the political arena of the Lagos West Senatorial District. Her report is presented from our studios. This is not a church gathering, even though all present are Christians. Their mission is simply politics. Obviously, the presence of one of Lagos' governorship aspirants on the platform of the All Progressive Congress, Lake Ekbiton, no doubt leaves observers with the belief that there is more to the gathering than meets the eyes. With attention focused on 2015 general elections, especially the governorship pools in Lagos, the arrowhead of the group wants Christian across denominations to vote one of their own into the seat of government in the state come 2015. We are the backside of it and uh, for long we have been preaching about politics is dirty and um, we don't really involve in politics and uh, when we talk about politics these are the people that take charge of our system. And so for Christians to stay back and started uh, arguing or making noise about uh, what happened to them and without them being part of what is happening. So I, I need to let them understand that they need to participate in it. They need to be part, of, part and parcel of what is happening. Once they are part of the uh, decision makers, then they can be there and then there won't be, a, there won't be any noise again. National Chairman of the group, Enoch Ajigbosu, admonished Christians to wake up from the slumber and be active in politics and governance of the state. Our endeavor is that uh, we as Christian leaders, the membership, the entire membership, are complaining to tell us, ah, the chairman is this, the governor has been there for so long, the, so we need, we believe that it's our duty to motivate them, to energize them, to sensitize them, and to also enlighten them on what I, and what it takes to be in partisan politics. A governorship aspirant on the platform of the All Progressive Congress in Lagos, Lagos Piton, emphasized the integrity factors as a key component in the business of governance. Well, uh, bottom line is good governance. And uh, we all strive to it in our various ways. So I believe that uh, apart from being a Christian, the various criteria listed by this body tally with my own vision of what government leadership should entail. Meanwhile, the group has urged all Christians to retrace their steps and find the right path in the affairs of governors and politics in Lagos State. You're watching Court TV News on the Hour, live from Lagos. I'll be back after this break with more stars. Don't go away. There is an Ebola virus epidemic in some West African countries. The Nigerian government wants you to be aware and watch out against the spread of Ebola in your community. Help keep our country safe and watch out for severe cases of fever, headaches, diarrhea, chest and abdominal pain, sore throat, cough, red eyes, and bleeding from the eyes, ears, and nose. Especially when these symptoms are found in persons coming into Nigeria from other West African countries. Protect yourself. Wash your hands regularly with soap and running water, or use a hand sanitizer. Avoid contact with the blood, urine, feces, or saliva of animals like bats, monkeys, gorillas, chimpanzees, or infected persons. The Ebola virus is deadly. Don't catch it. Don't spread it. This message is brought to you by the Federal Ministry of Information. Welcome back. For more on the news, you can also reach us on our social media platform. On Facebook, it's facebook.com forward slash news. 
on our Twitter handle at Cool TV News NG. Get to watch news and programs on YouTube at youtube.com forward slash Cool TV. Live a space and news. Like the prodigal son, former governor of Ogun State, Benga Daniel, who defected from the People's Democratic Party in year 2011 to the Liberal Party, was welcomed back to the fold by a large crowd of party supporters in Abeokuta, the state capital. Olaju Mokel Latunji was there and brought back this report. that will carry out policies that is going to be beneficial to the people, not necessarily to the bourgeoisie of the society. That is what we stand for. That's what's going to happen. His return was a triumphant entry amidst fanfare, as jubilant crowd of party supporters and PDP hierarchy in Ogun State's graced the occasion. Benga Daniel was a two-time governor of the state defected in 2011 to the Labour Party, where he was emerged in leadership controversy. He had declared interest in returning to the PDP in the presence of major stakeholders of the party in Abuja two weeks ago. Some PDP stalwarts say his coming back is a blessing to the strength of the party in Ogun State ahead of the 2015 general elections. And for Buruji Kashamu, Daniel's return has put a complete end to the rift between them. With, with his coming back to the party, it means that most of the agreed members who left the party around 2011 election are all coming back. He would have been misunderstanding yesterday. Tomorrow, the misunderstanding of yesterday can be resolved. You understand? So, OJD is not my enemy. What caused the problem was about politics. But we have now resolved it. All of us have decided to join hands together in order for us to move forward so that we can be able to defeat our enemy. OJD is a good mobilizer, but I must say that there wouldn't be everything to come back to. I'm not going to embrace him because he's one of us, he's our leader. There is no question of embracing anybody. Back home, we are together and he's welcome back. Former Speaker of the House of Representatives, Dimeji Bankole, says the development is a strong conviction that the unity he has been preaching has come to stay. Oh, I'm very happy. Uh, like I've always said, um, for the past one year, I've been pleading with all members of the party to come back to the party. I have no doubt uh, that um, OGD is a man of his words. He's here today. Um, all the groups are here today, I believe. And uh, we'll take it up from here. We are saying the government of APC for three and a half going to four years. And the people of the state are saying the difference between the two is as clear as a bright summer day. That is my own way of saying the people of Ogun State are tired with the government that is only concerned with creating bridges and breaking up our cities and doing nothing else. The return of Daniel to the PDP in the eyes of many political observers would no doubt push up the political skill in the state as the heat ahead the 2015 general elections gather momentum. Or large Mokyo Latsuji, Cool TV News, built. Away from there now to work at a state where the political subterfuge ahead of the 2015 general elections is beginning to bear its teeth. As the usual intrigues among political parties play out, the two leading parties in the state, the PDP and the APC, are obviously on the front burner. Rashid Rashid and the special report takes on chieftains of the two parties on their chances, especially in the three senatorial districts of the state ahead of the 2015 general elections. The politics of Ikiti is no doubt a special case in Southwest. The reason is not far fetched. Though the PDP is now in power, the APC says it still has a major say in the state, especially the state House of Assembly, and this is shaping the preparation 
for the 2015 elections. In three senatorial districts, factors that will shape the elections are coming to fall. In Ekiti South, though no APC member has shown interest so far, a former deputy governor and PDP senatorial aspirant Abiodun Jimmy is counting on the clout of the present government for the PDP to sail through in the 2015 elections. We have a governor on seat. He would handle the general elections, and he is a great mobilizer and a great canvasser of votes. And so we're not afraid of the general elections. In Ekiti Central, which has the state capital at Ekiti as headquarters, the APC is yet to throw up any candidate. But the political bigwigs showing interest even in the PDP may be an issue for the party. But an aspirant, Fatima Rajira Saki, says the PDP must guide against imposition. We have been campaigning to the people that uh, we so much believe in primary because that's what they call democracy, give everybody chances. Not that you will tell this one, oh, no, you can't you can contest. Let everybody come to the field. Give them fair treatment, level, playing level ground, so that everybody will be satisfied. So my party so much believe in it, and uh, that's what is going to happen. But Ikiti North Senatorial District may present the most compelling race, with both parties already boasting aspirants ready for the race. APC is still so much in existence in Ikiti, and this is going to be the proof that APC, this next general election is going to be the proof that APC is still very solid and very strong in Ikiti. Hence, I'm picking my own ticket from APC. I believe as of today from Ikiti North, I have the pedigree, I've done work for our people, and I know my people will vote for me. I have them behind me. Though both Arishi and Oshikolu are senatorial aspirants, they have this to say on the presidential elections. If anything, I want them to be in high spirits because the future is very bright, not only for us in Ekiti, but Nigeria as a whole. Because as you can see, the APC is becoming of age. They are showing more positive things for this country, and it's the only hope the country has. For us, we have worked for our party. We have worked for the governor. We are, we are going to work for Mr. President. And I know every occasion, every, every election we have had, had delivered my local government, even for Mr. President. As the 2015 general elections draw near, time will be the ultimate arbiter of who carries the day. Rashid Rashid, or TV News. While the leadership of the People's Democratic Party in Oshu has condemned the crisis which greeted the recent Congress of the All Progressives Congress in the state, the publicity secretary of the PDP in Oshu State, Bola Jao, describes the crisis as a disgrace to the ruling party as it endangers the peace of the state. He advised the state government to set up a committee of inquiry to investigate the matter as it was done in Isiaka Adeleke's case. It tells you that there's something fishy that must be looked out for. It's, it's very clear. It's very clear to all designing eyes that the, 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 the majority of the lawful vote, even by that, on the face value of that, it tells you in clear terms that the majority of lawful vote cast at the August 9, 2012 election of this state belongs to PDP and it belongs to Otumba Iyala Mishiri. The Congress of the APC has since remained inconclusive following the fracas. The Nigerian Medical Association is to spend 50 million naira to train doctors on the best way to handle the Ebola virus disease and other deadly contagious diseases. Uh, the fund is to be managed by an emergency response committee, which also has the mandate to open accounts where doctors can voluntarily contribute money. NME President Kayode Bembe discussed this in Abuja on the sidelines of the opening of the annual physician week. There's, a, there's always a starting point. Now we have a committee already on emergency response. And Ebola is key in this particular committee. And there's a regular budget for it. It only means that whatever money we are raising will be additional to the budget plan that we have for fighting this Ebola. For now, the total budget of the medical session depends on the amount that is remitted to us by the uh, medical council. But we believe, as of now, the budget we are preparing to the national uh, executive council is way up to 50 million. But we don't know how much we are going to raise from this input, which we are also going to add to that budget.
And that wraps it this hour on Call TV News. Join us again at the top of the hour for more stars. I'm Nifemi Ogunsoye. Thanks for being there.